Thank you. Good morning. Uh, well, my name is Eric Mas. I'm, I'm working currently in uh, Tohoku University. It's an international research institute of disaster science. Uh, I have to uh, welcome you next year for the World Conference of Disaster Risk Reduction. So, hope we'll see you in Sendai. Uh, okay, so my talk uh, today, uh, very simple and very fast. I will try to um, revisit again what happened in the 2011 Japan tsunami, uh, specifically about the tsunami evacuation in, in, a, in an area called Natori in Yureage. So uh, for its key challenges, I'm not going to make it uh, so uh, detailed uh, explanation of what challenges we have, uh, but some ideas uh, maybe I, will, I can share with you. Then uh, tsunami evacuation simulation, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell, explain a little bit how is the model we, we developed a couple of years ago and we are using right now. Uh, the case study, which is the, the main part of this presentation, and then some conclusions. So, um, about the key challenges, these are just uh, general ideas. Uh, probably it fits to tsunami evacuation, but all, also some other evacuations. First is not only technology for tsunami warning system, but also evacuation compliance is very important to take into account. Uh, we, within these years, we have made a lot of improvement in the in our tsunami warning systems. We have reduced in the, from the 1960s of um, maybe 30 minutes, 15 minutes of uh, forecasting of, for the warning, and now we have three minutes or even faster uh, information about the, the, the warning of the tsunami. But still, uh, even if we gi give this information to the population, uh, there is a very low uh, evacuation compliance, there is a very low percentage of population that actually evacuates. So we have to take also into account uh, the user who is going to, to, to use this information and, and they will probably use this information. So uh, finally, we can save lives. And also uh, shelter planning, uh, location allocation, capacity safety of these, uh, of these shelters, uh, the availability of shelters around the area to make it easy, the evacuation, to facilitate the evacuation for more population. Uh, this is one of the main tasks of tsunami evacuation planning, actually. And then uh, cope with hazard and uncertainty. I just uh, asked the question, how far or how high should I evacuate, which is actually the main concern of most of the evacuees. They, they don't concern so much of, uh, uh, I don't know, what is the velocity of the tsunami. I mean, they are not actually thinking about that. They just want to know if my house is going to be uh, inundated, if I have to move, or how far I have to move. So this kind of a simple... Um, messages we have to give them and, and we need to, to tell exactly actually uh, what is the, the best uh, behavior they, they could take. Uh, warning information upgrades and the timing. Uh, we will see this in the case study, uh, what happened with these upgradings of, of tsunami warning and, and the timing when these upgrades ca came. Uh, so um, just to start uh, about talking about the model, uh, the philosophy of this model, we wanted to make it the evacuation model, we wanted to make it uh, very simple to understand, very simple to use. Um, so first, uh, the philosophy was one of the principles is to use accessible data, data which is uh, the spatial data we have with the, the GIS, which is very common right now in many localities. Uh, the next one, the number two is uh, up-to-date technology to uh, characterize the hazard using the, 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 the recent technology. Well, well, not recent, but actually the, the most technology is the tsunami evacuation simulation. So we can have uh, actually more reliable uh, features of the tsunami. Uh, and then, because we are talking about humans and the problem of evacuation is actually behavior and what people uh, is going to do or what they expect to do is uh, very straightforward, just using questionnaire service and, and characterize the population in a very easy manner so we can include this in the model and, uh, well, everyone can, can uh, reply this in a different locality. Uh, and the last one, well, we integrate all of these and make it very simple but uh, try to um, show a complexity or try to explore the complexity of the evacuation process, which is actually the main uh, approach of agent-based modeling. Next, please. So uh, to make it all even easier, user-friendly, uh, it is an interactive environment for modeling. We have a, a very easy, uh, in the left hand, you have the, the panel control when you give your, your variables and parameters. You have the, during the simulation, you can see what is happening. And then in the right hand, you have the outputs and the graphs that you can uh, control or actually uh, monitor what is, what is happening in the, in the real evacuation. So you have here pedestrians and, and, and 
vehicles, which actually is it's a very simple um, interaction between vehicles and, and pedestrians. Uh, so the next one, uh, I'm, I just put benchmarking because uh, we, we have benchmarked uh, tsunami evacuation simulations, sorry, tsunami simulations, numerical simulations uh, uh, throughout these years. But um, nowadays probably tsunami evacuation simulation is, 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 try, is starting to be used for uh, actual practical applications of, of tsunami evacuation planning. So uh, at this point we, we need actually to probably uh, benchmark or standardize the methodolo methodologies or what is the, met the models we are using because there are so several models with different approaches. Uh, so it's probably an idea for the future that we, 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 we need to get together for this. Oh, that's a tsunami coming. <laughs> So I'm not going to uh, the previous one. I'm not going to uh, explain in detail what is the inside of the model. Uh, I, I think I did this before in, in, in the conference in other different years. But if you want to uh, discuss this uh, later, we can discuss. And well, the model description we have some um, already published work and some other case studies in Indonesia, Thailand, and Peru. So um, yeah, I, I'm free after the, 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 the session to discuss this. So I would like to go uh, to the main, which is the, the case study. Um, well, this is, uh, if you see in the, the upper figure, is the Natori Yuriage. The area is called Yuriage in the Natori city. Um, it's uh, 50 kilometers north of the Sendai International Airport. So it's a very plain area. Uh, we have 5,000 uh, people were living here and uh, well, a massive destruction because of the tsunami and around 750 people were uh, killed by the tsunami in this area. So uh, uh, next please. So what we, uh, what we can see here as most of the areas in the, in the, in the plain area of, of, of Miyagi was that the tsunami hazard map was uh, underestimating of the, the actual uh, tsunami. If you see there, uh, there is a, until the orange area around in the, in, in the right figure. And then we have three evacuation uh, buildings, official evacuation buildings, which is the community center, the junior high school, and the elementary school uh, that, uh, well, was, were the main buildings that people evacuated, uh, besides these two exits for uh, vehicle evacuation. So uh, next. What we did is we modeled the, the tsunami uh, using uh, Satake, uh, Professor Satake's model. And uh, well, just so you can see, the tsunami arrival time in this area is 65 minutes, so more than a, one hour available to evacuate. Uh, the tsunami inundation depth is over the four meters. The maximum was around eight meters. Uh, the area for evacuation, uh, what the, one, the one we modeled in the, in the, in the, in the modeling, in the simulation was 1.6 by 1.7 kilometers. So this is the area that we, we are uh, studying right now. Next, please. So uh, just to, uh, so we can see what happened actually in the, in the, in the uh, based on the, all the information we gather after, after the, the, the tsunami. So the tsunami, the, the earthquake happened at 2.46 in the afternoon, in the Friday. Uh, and then after three minutes, we had the first information of the tsunami warning. And after four, we, we got the first estimate of, of heights in Miyagi area, for Miyagi area, the area of this case study is around six meters. Uh, and then uh, 28 minutes later, uh, the warning, there was a warning upgrade for Miyagi, uh, giving uh, over 10 meters. Uh, but this time, of course, most of the population uh, started to evacuate using vehicles. And some of them uh, to the community center, the, the blue areas to the junior high school, and the red areas to the elementary school, and some other er uh, points that are not official, like, for example, uh, pedestrian evacuation, uh, pedestrian bridges that were around the area. Um, so uh, after the 28 minutes, we have uh, 320. It's uh, 34 minutes later. A member of the, of the fire department came to the community center and let the people know, based on the information that we, he got from Iwate and what the impact was in, in the northern areas, uh, he, he said that um, maybe this building, which is a two-story building, is not enough for the tsunami that is coming. So uh, a lot of uh, people in the, in the community center were discussing uh, what we're going to do. So after 10 minutes, they decided to start to get off that 
uh, evacuation building and move to the junior high school, which is a three-story building. So they, uh, they started to evacuate at 3.30, but a tsunami came uh, 21 minutes later. The problem was that when they started to evacuate from the community center, uh, there was a lot of traffic jam, and um, some of them wanted to evacuate still with car. So, uh, well, finally, a, a group of people uh, died within that second evacuation. So the problem here was a two-step evacuation that actually contributed to the increase of fatalities. So our objective in this case is very simple. is first uh, try as a verification or try to, to observe what actually happened is to model as close as possible to the actual uh, evacuation of 3.11 event. And the second case is uh, what would have happened if we avoid this two-step evacuation during this event. Uh, next, please. So, uh, very simple behavior and conditions for the simulation. The population is distri distributed from GIS data we have uh, using census and block level. Uh, the number of pedestrians and evacuees in the vehicles is distributed according to the survey data we had uh, before and, and also after. Uh, each agent uh, has an individual timing to start evacuation. We have a distribution of, of the starting time of evacuation. Uh, pedestrians went to shelter and, and pedestrian bridge. This is a pedestrian bridge in the yellow circle. And 40% of the population used vehicles according to what uh, later uh, post uh, surveys uh, mentioned. So uh, just next one, next, oh, okay. So this is just an, our model results. Um, if you see in the left hand uh, upper figure, which is the, uh, is a graph showing the, the number of population uh, coming to each evacuation building and oh, one of the, each of the exits in vehicles. And if you see the, the, the blue one, it, it, we have around 300 people ca came to the community center, then stayed in the community center for a long time, and then maybe after 20 minutes, they started to, to get off the community center to move. Uh, you can see the simulation at the, in the right hand. So uh, in the table, we can see that in case A, uh, the model can um, actually predict a little bit very close to the actual capacity of the buildings and the casualties estimation is very close. Uh, I, I should say that this is the average of a 200 runs, so this is a stochastic simulation. What is random here is the, the timing of uh, the agent for decision of evacuation and, the, and the, um, the route they decided to go to the, to the shelter. And what would happen if the case B, what, what if this uh, second evacuation will not have happened? Uh, at least 300 of, of these people uh, around the area would have been probably uh, saved in, in, in a shelter. You can see that in case A and case B in the blue figures, uh, the, the yellow and the red dots means that, uh, yellow means traffic jam, and red means uh, casualty during traffic. So uh, we can see that in case A, what actually happened in the, in the, in the event, uh, the model can predict the traffic that happened outside of the, of the community center. But if the, two evacuation, the second evacuation uh, would have not happened, there was no uh, traffic jam uh, predicted by the model. So actually, what we can see with, with this is uh, uh, understand what happened in the real situation, what could have happened if a different behavior uh, would have taken, and, and then, well, for the future, uh, some other conclusions that is the next slide. So my conclusion is that this tsunami evacuation simulation is useful, useful to elucidate evacuation conditions and the human behavior, evaluate road and shelter capacities. Uh, probably we need to benchmark these models. Uh, avoiding to the two-step evacuation would have resulted in less casualties. Uh, and this is second evacuation happened because of the uh, first tsunami warning message which was uh, really underestimated, and the second upgraded information. So, uh, which is very important. What is the first tsunami, uh, one of the, my conclusions is the first tsunami warning message is very important uh, for the fast decision of, this, uh, of the evacuation. I think I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we have time for a quick question. See, I have one. It, the secondary evacuation spot, was that, did that end up being high enough for people to survive? Oh, yeah. Actually, even the, the first one, uh, 43 people uh, saved in the, in the community center. So, uh, 
probably even if people would have stayed in a community center, some of them would have been uh, saved. But the second one was uh, definitely better because three-story building, so it's much better. <laughs> Thank you.